This is NDTV. And you're watching NDTV Hindu. Welcome to you special on NDTV Hindu. We're still at the Great Lakes Institute of Management. It's a continuation of yesterday's episode. And today we're still going to be talking about, of course, the economy and the union budget. But now we're going to be concentrating a bit more on new ideas, new avenues. Where should we concentrate a bit more? Okay, those are the things we're going to be talking about. And you're the uh, bright uh, young minds, uh, the future of, you know, uh, the future of the country. So, yeah, give me some inputs as to where we should start concentrating a bit more. I think in the coming union budget, what the government should look at is first of all infrastructure, second would be education. I think if these two things are tackled, uh, then India would be on its way. Ahead, right? Okay, quite obvious reasons, but I want to hear yours. Uh, okay, uh, so in, you, you want to talk about more in infrastructure as to how do we go about Why education, why infrastructure? Yeah, tell me about it. Okay, infrastructure would be the, uh, uh, any country that has grown, has grown on basis of infrastructure. Take it for US, UK, Europe, any any place that takes for that matter. Uh, what happens is if you have the infrastructure, at, at present India has just uh, been able to cope up with just one-fourth of its population and the other three-fourths are left to fend for themselves. So I, that would be the basic thing that you need to tackle and education. Uh, I think the root causes of all the problems that are currently occurring, big politicians, corruption, terrorism, is all because of education. All right. So if you sort out those two things, uh, it would be uh, a good Okay, way. interesting you mentioned terrorism and as well, those things as well. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, what Zoeb said is uh, correct, but I would like to add that uh, the expenditure on R&D in our country. It is not even 1% or uh, uh, probably it is less than 1%. Mm. If we want to have a secure system, you know, a secured uh, country, we want to spend on our security. We have mm. to give money to DRDO, organizations like ISRO, to Department of Atomic Energy, to the uh, industries in biotechnology, nanotechnology, all these industries. Basically, expenditure on R&D has to be increased. So you think it's not enough as of now? No, not enough. It is not even, I think, uh, to my knowledge, it is less than 1% All of right. the GDP. Okay. Yep. I just want to come back to Zoeb's view to reiterate what he mentioned about infrastructure. Like, uh, the situation we see is really pathetic in most areas. You have huge IT parks, but you don't even have roadways, you know, proper roadways to move, uh, I mean, to go there. And as already mentioned, you know, distribution channels are being affected by infrastructure. And another thing I would uh, like to point out is China, India, we are all being seen as emerging economies of, you know, and uh, to keep up with the pace at which we are growing, I think infrastructure really needs to grow. We need to grow in infrastructure. So that should be a major, uh, you know, prime importance or prime importance for us. I think okay. even beyond infrastructure, I would lay number one stress on education and that too in primary education. We have on agenda making more IITs, making more IIMs, but what about primary education? We heard Sir Sam Petroda saying that he wants to stress more on quantity as of now, not on quality. Mm. But as far as the study of World Bank goes, they say that the, any rupee spent on primary education is actually five times more productive than any rupee spent on your secondary education. Three times more important than your higher education. Yes. And even 2.5 times more important than on infrastructure. So my first test would be primary education. Second would be healthcare. Where we lie in the healthcare. We know yeah. our HDI index is 137 or 138. No, that's not it. When we want to become a progressive nation, you want to compare yourself to US, UK in terms of GDP, but not in terms of education, not in terms of healthcare. Millions of people die in a country beyond uh, before their productive age comes and that's why we are so poor in productivity i think I, all right i'd okay. like to add to his point i mean saying that it's not just a primary education and in fact even if you take the secondary education you have the number of engineering colleges which are increasing but the quality of education has not been maintained that is because the private colleges which open up do it for the sake of profit it is known around the world that there are actually non-profit uh, renowned institutions which attract the academia across the globe they are working for non-profit they're working on funding from alumni from from the corporate so what's your point so i feel that you know the the government should stringently uh, act against these institutions which are minting money out of these private colleges rather focus and stress on the quality of the education provided by these all right all right okay yeah go ahead 
Uh, what I would like to say is that in, uh, the government spending on the def defense should also improve. Uh, we, ha we have been having uh, cross-border infiltration at a very high level and we have seen that the uh, amount of forces chi China and Pakistan has been building across the broad border, near the border, has been increasing day by day. What we need is uh, high-tech equipment, which they have like F-18s and all that. So our go defense spending is has been dwindling for the okay, last the few years. Okay, the defense spending has to be increased, all right, yeah. I think we have a constant sum of money. So if I had the option of spending on in, uh, security, I would lay more stress on internal security than external security. Because today, because of Moyes and all other forces from inside the country, we are more insecure inside. We need to send up police forces. We are following a deficit of around 50% of the police forces. We require double. We require to double the police forces that we presently have. More than police internal border securities. All now, right. Okay. But yeah, but you're saying more than spending on the military, spend more on more uh, paramilitary securities. forces within the country. All right. Anything else? Yep. Yeah. One. And I feel the borders themselves, if you compare the uh, Bangladesh and uh, Bengal border, the border is so vulnerable for infiltration of anybody. So it's not, even if you beef up the security at all, infra public infrastructure locations like a bus stand or a railway station, if you're going to have borders where, you know, people can just infiltrate from anywhere, it's going to be a very, very hard task for you to actually... All right, anyway, guys, people. one point which, I mean, I mean one... Uh, point that comes to my attention is all of you have so many uh, sectors in mind saying this is why we should increase investment, this is why we should concentrate more. But it's quite obvious we cannot invest in all these sectors at the same time to the extent all of us want, right? There has to be some debate and some um, way of finding out where we should invest more, right? Now he says defense, uh, there's this discussion about internal security, external security, there's, there's healthcare, education. Now it's obvious that we can't invest or you know put in more money into all of these things it's it's virtually impossible for the finance minister or any cabinet to do that so probably the next question is in which sector should we concentrate more today is it defense education health what do you guys have to say yeah i think i'll lay down the priorities i mm. think number one priority would be primary education mm. number two i'll give it to health number three would be secondary education number four will be internal security mm. And then infrastructure would be at a sub uh, separate block, mm. depending upon the pace that we require. Mm. For now, we can have as a second as the infrastructure, but gradually, beyond the period of five to six years, we need to decrease on infrastructure, increase on other things like education and health. So we have two sectors. One is a priority of others, and the second is the infrastructure. Okay, now he's laid out a, a very detailed uh, plan, so to say, but how many of you think we should concentrate less on infrastructure, as he says? I would say that in, uh, instead of infrastructure, means not not up to that extent, but education would take the first uh, first priority, and also within education, I I don't think this point was covered where the number of teachers in India mm. is very low. The per student to teacher ratio is very low. So if we have better training institutes for teachers and uh, lectures, that would be better. All right, yeah, go ahead. At this point, I would la uh, like to ask the government what happened to the national highway scheme, what happened to the golden quadrilateral scheme, what happened to the river interlinking scheme. All these major infrastructure projects have to be completed. There is, these have been put on the back burner. There is no progress after... Obviously uh, because of political hurdles as yes, well. Yes, obviously. What happens is after the change of the government, the uh, schemes of the previous government are, are dropped. Without any... Uh... Okay, a very interesting question he has raised and we're going to take a break there. Okay, after the break, we're going to be discussing a bit about political hurdles to important decisions which we need to take as a country in, in the form of a union budget and much more. Keep watching your special on NETV Hindu. <laughs>